In this episode, I'm going to be telling you guys everything you need to know about applying for a visitor's visa to Australia, okay? So all the documents you need to submit, what you need to know, all the policies, guidelines that have been issued out by the immigration services in Australia. I'm going to be taking you guys on a step-by-step -step approach as to how you can get all your documents in place and apply for this visitor's visa to Australia. So if you're interested in visiting Australia or maybe you have a friend or a family member who is looking to travel to Australia as a tourist, this is the video for you because I exhaustively explain everything they need to know about the application process. So if you're interested in this content, why don't you give me just one second? Let me just dash off to the market and I'm gonna be right back with more. You know the way I do it when I drop lyrical Anytime I spit lyrical, philosophical All the niggas mimical, but they stare still On ticket literal, punchline score lateral Snag them up that Hello Chronics, hello YouTube, how are you, 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 you all doing today? It's still your value based King Fuse from FuseChronicles.com. We are a travel, tourism and lifestyle channel here on YouTube, bringing you all the tips and hacks to do with your international travels, okay? So have you subscribed to our channel yet? If you haven't, what are you doing? It's free of charge to go down, so why don't you go down there, smash the subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, so when we drop future videos, you're notified and you can catch this content while they drop. And why don't you give us a thumbs up? It helps us a lot. It tells Mr. YouTube that you found our videos interesting and they're going to find more people just like you all around the world to show these videos to. And if you have friends and family members that like to tour different countries or different cities and maybe they get into trouble, get into fixes and not knowing what to do in certain situations, why don't you share our videos with them so they stay guided and make the best decisions while traveling? Now, I always say this before I start my videos. I am not a travel agent. I'm not a tour guide. I don't work with the immigration services, the customs services of any country. I just use my experience having worked for an embassy, both the commercial section of an embassy and the consular section of an embassy. And I use this experience to throw more light or shed more light on what it would require for you to travel to select countries all around the world. Okay, so without any much further ado, let's jump right into it. So if you are interested in traveling to Australia with a visitor's visa, then it means that you are looking to travel to Australia as a tourist. So you're looking to take advantage of all the cruises and visiting families in different cities in Australia. These are literally the only things you can do while you visit Australia with a visitor's visa. Okay? So you want to go to Australia. What do you need? What do you need to go to Australia? I'll tell you, my friend you need an international passport, okay? You need a passport. I always say this in all my visa videos. You cannot get a visa without an international passport. Who will give you a visa? Now, nobody's gonna give you a visa without a passport. And your passport needs to be valid for a period bigger or larger than six months. So you can have a passport that's gonna expire in five months time, three months time, it should be a passport that's valid for six months and beyond. If you plan to apply for a new passport, maybe you found out that your old passport is about to expire very soon, my advice to you is to apply for a passport renewal first. If you are in Nigeria, I think I made a video about how to renew your passport, you might pop up somewhere up there. So renew your passport first before you think about going to apply for a visa, okay? This helps you not to get rejected because just the mere fact that your passport is about to be expired, it's enough grounds for you to be rejected visa. I know, I know, I know it's crazy, but it's, it's, it's what it is, okay? You would need to organize some health care checks, okay? Now, this is very tricky. 
You are not mandated to organize a healthcare check at the start before you put in your application for a visitor's visa to Australia. You're not mandated to do this. You could also still put in your application for a visa, submit all the supporting documents, which I'm going to mention in just a little bit. You could put in your application and the embassy in the Australian Embassy or High Commission in your country would be the one that will reach out to you and tell you we don't have your health care examination results or documentation. Can you run some health care checks and send the results? And they will tell you the series of tests that they want you to run. It's just basic stuff is chicken pox, smallpox, yellow fever, malaria, COVID, measles, meningitis, just the run of the meal test that you normally run before you travel. If you, you can do this without them prompting you, just show them that you're very prepared and it might actually help your visa process for you to get granted a visa or you could wait and they'll tell you. So however you decide to do it, it's really up to you, but you would have to run a healthcare check to prove to them that you're healthy. Now, Australia, the country Australia like to do this because it helps keep the country safe. Australia is known as one of the most healthy places, maybe after New Zealand and Finland. So they do this to make sure that their population, the community of people already in Australia are safe. They do this to make sure that the amount of money in their budget that is allocated to healthcare can actually be predicted before the next year. You could get help for your application. You could get help by soliciting the assistance of an agent to help you fast track or put together all your documents, supporting documents for your visa application. So they're gonna help you arrange it and put them in the order that is usually accepted for this sort of applications. However, if you're looking to get a travel agent to run this process for you, this person must be a registered migration agent or a legal practitioner or a person who is specialized in exemption affairs so he could be an exemption officer and these are the only three people that are recognized to help you put together your application by the immigration services of australia so if you go getting a random person who has come to you and is selling himself to you i can do this i can do this if this person does not fall under this category. So if it's not a registered or a licensed migration agent, if the person is not a legal practitioner or an exemption officer, then this person cannot help you. Because if anybody other than these three people put together your application, you could be rejected because there's a need to have these people's name down while tendering your application. Whether they're doing it online on your behalf or they're submitting it in person to the High Commission or Embassy or they're putting it together or something else you could do is they could put it together for you and give it to you and then you go submit it. So that way, there's no need to know who put together your application. The High Commission or the Embassy would think that you did it by yourself. What documents do you need while applying for a visitor's visa? Now, before I get into the documents you might need, I want to say that you need to put in as much documentation as possible. Make it as clear as possible as to your intent. This is what I'm traveling for. If you're traveling as a tourist, obviously because you're watching this video, you're looking to get a visitor's visa to Australia, put all the supporting documents together. And if you are from a country that doesn't speak English, maybe you're from Myanmar, Maybe you're from China, maybe you're from Japan, or all these countries whose native language is not English. Get a translator to translate your documents in English. If you're doing this from within Australia, then your translator has to be someone who is licensed to be a translator. The person's name and contact information like email address, phone number, and all that kind of stuff needs to be a ping with the documents that's being translated for people who are getting translators from within Australia. If you're getting a translator from outside Australia, obviously you don't need their names to be taken down or their contact information, but you need to translate your documents in perfect English that's going to be understandable by the immigration officers or officials.
One of the documents that you need to submit while trying to apply for your visitor's visa to Australia are identity documents. Now, identity documents are your biodata page in your international passport, which has to be clear and it has to be colored. So if you're scanning it or if you're taking a picture of it with your phone or with a camera, it has to be perfect. The resolution has to be on point so that so that when the immigration officer are trying to process your documents, they can look at your identity documents, see your name, see your passport number, know when the passport is expiring, know your address, know your passport number, and all the information, vital information they need to make a decision as to whether to grant you visa or not. They should be able to know about your history by looking at a clear biodata page from your international passport. I'll talk more about biometrics somewhere down the line in this video. You need to provide a photograph of your national identity card, okay? Maybe it could be your, if you're from Nigeria, it could be your driver's license, it could be your name number, your national identity number, or some document or card that has your information on it, your state of origin, your religion, and all this other kind of stuff. You need to snap it, just like in the case of your biodata page for your passport, it needs to be of clear resolution, something that can be seen. If you've applied for a change of name in the past, you need to send them documentation, legal documentation that proves that you applied for a change of name and the courts approved your application and your name has changed. This is usually in a situation where they find out that the name on your passport and the name on your other documents are different. There must be a documentation that ties these names together to prove to the processing officer that, okay, this person has changed his name, but this is the document that proves to this effect. If you are a woman or a man who has gone through a divorce, you need to go through or put through documentation that proves that you are divorced from this person. You are no more married to this person. You are not together anymore. These documents have to be there. Now, it's very important that I put this in there, guys. If the immigration services in Australia can prove the fact that you are going to be going back home at upon expiration of your Australian visitor's visa, you will be granted visa automatically. Now, how can they know, or how can you pass this message across to them that, listen, I'm just here to visit this city, maybe Melbourne, maybe Sydney, whatever. I'm just here to see this beautiful city at the end. My visa might not even need to expire for me to go back to my country. You need to have a letter from your boss or from your workplace that recognizes you as a person working in XYZ capacity for the company who has been given a leave of absence, maybe because you're on vacation, maybe because you're on holiday or whatever, that this person is supposed to resume work at XYZ date. This is this does magic for your application because it tells the immigration services people that, oh, this person is just here to vacation after which she's returning back to a job that pays her well. Maybe it'll be good for your boss or someone who's writing this letter in your company to actually even have paying your salary there somewhere that, oh, this person is paid X, Y, Z amount of money. Or if you are a religious, something from your church that says this person is on XYZ mission, at the end of his stay, he's going to come back. Or if you're a minor, you, can, you have your parents or your guardian or your legal guardian write a letter that say this person just got admission into a university in our country. This person is just traveling to just vacation and just taking the sights and sounds of Australia after which person is coming back. Some form of documentation that just proves that you're coming back is going to make their mind rest easy and you're going to be granted your visa. Another document that you need to package and put in through with your application is a pay slip. A pay slip from the company you work or if you own the company, tax return documentation that proves that you are up to date on filing your taxes. You would also have to put bank statement records that shows that you have enough money in your bank account to cover all expenses for your stay. There's gonna be a document that shows that your account has been audited and there's no illegal activity going on in your account. Maybe there was illegal activity and you're fleeing your country. You have to prove to them that you are an outstanding citizen, you're working for XYZ company or you own XYZ company and these are all your documents that shows an account, a forensic accountant that's run an audit 
on your account and you were in good standing with the law. There also needs to be documentation, deposit slips or some form of documentation that shows that you've been making or transacting with a certain account and this is the account that's going to be responsible for all your expenses while in Canada. So there's going to be documentation that shows every month or every two weeks or every three months you paid money into this account. You're going to provide credit card statements, okay? You're going to provide credit card statements they're trying to sell or they're trying to make sure that you have the means and the capacity to look after yourself while in Australia. If you are traveling to Australia, maybe someone sends you an invitation letter to come to Australia to check them out. You need to enclose this invitation letter in your application as well so they know that it's a family member, a friend, an acquaintance, somebody who is inviting you. You would need to submit a character document. Now this could be as something as simple as a police affidavit. This could be something from your workplace. This could be from your Ministry of Character and Human Resources or Ministry of Interior that shows that you are an outstanding citizen, someone who obeys and adheres to the laws of the land and someone who doesn't have a criminal record. You need to submit this document. However, this document is not in itself mandatory. If they need these documents, they will tell you to send it to them. But I need to point this out, guys. The documents you submit for your visitor's visa application would be processed and those documents by themselves would be enough for the embassy or high commission to issue you a verdict of approval or denial. Okay, so make sure that you pump as much information, documents as possible while filing for this visa or this particular visa category. And please do not falsify information. Don't falsify your bank account records. Don't falsify maybe getting an invitation letter from a dodgy person because you want them to think you have a relative in Australia. Be truthful in this application process because immediately they find out that there's misleading information or there's something that doesn't just add up, they're not going to call you and say, dude, what happened there? Can you confirm this? They'll deny you the visa. But the good thing about Australia is they're always going to tell you why your visa was denied. You might need help. It's possible that you might need help to get through all these processes because it's, it's rather much I must say. You might need help, so you might need the immigration services to appoint an authorized migration officer to look after your case. If this is your case, then you would have to fill a form 956A, which is a form that tells the immigration services that this person is in need of a migration officer to help him put together his application. Okay, you, this is there's a provision for this. You can reach out to them. You can go to the Immigration Services of Australia website, which I'm going to leave in the description section below, and you can fill a form nine nine five six A that tells them you need someone. You need an, you need a migration officer to be put on your case. If you are applying for a visitor's visa to Australia but you have the conviction in your heart and you know or you've made up your mind that you want to stay in Australia for a period that extends or exceeds two years, three years, four years, or even up to 10 years on a visitor's visa. Now, this is usually something that applies to people that have family in Australia. Maybe a mother that has a daughter who just gave birth to a baby or someone who has family members in Australia, you would need to signify or write this somewhere in your application that, listen, I'm looking for a visa for XYZ period of time because of blah, blah, blah reasons. You need to state it. Okay, you need to state that you need an extended visa while in Australia. It's a provision that makes you do this. It's possible that you could be sending your son or your daughter to Australia and they've not yet clocked the age of 18. So they're still maybe 17, 15, 16, whatever, but below the age of 18. If you're sending a minor to Australia without any guardian or anybody to travel with this person, 
you would have to send documentation that you have given express approval for your son, your daughter, your cousins, your minor, someone that's under your care to travel to Australia. Now, this document has to have your name. It has to link the relationship between you and this minor, whether you're the parent or whether you're the foster parent or whether you adopt, adopted this person or whether you've been granted guardianship, legal guardianship by a court in your country and you're letting this person travel. So there needs to be some documentation. It has to be a documentation that binds you and this person and shows that you've given express consent for this person to make this trip. It's possible for you to submit your application for a visitor's visa to Australia in person. It's also possible for you to do your application or submit your application online. If you want to sub submit your application online, <laughs> if you want to submit your application online, then you need to go to the Immigration Service of Australia website and fill in all the parameters on the application portal and then submit your form online. Like I said, you can do it in person or you can do it online. If you are applying for a visitor's visa, if you are applying for a visitor's visa, you have to be outside Australia. I cannot stress this enough. You can be denied a visitor's visa if you are applying for a visitor's visa from within Australia. Come on now, it doesn't make any sense. I'm applying for a visitor's visa. Good morning, sir. I'm applying for a visitor's visa to your country. Oh, location. It's a visitor's visa to Australia location. Australian. You're already there. How did you get there? By boat, by camel, by and on your snow. So you're there already. So to apply for a visitor visa to Australia, you have to be outside Australia. And you shouldn't make plans for your travel until you've, you've got an express written consent from the High Commission in your country of Australia or Embassy of Australia in your country telling you you've been granted visa. They are going to inform you, regardless of whatever happened, they're going to inform you, oh, you got granted visa to come to Australia or you got denied because of blah, blah, blah reasons. Until you get consent that, listen, you've been granted visa, do not make travel plans, okay? It it's, it's makes sense not to make travel plans until you get a visa. Yeah. You do not need to take any biometric or you do not need to have your biometrics taken unless the Embassy of Australia or the High Commission of Australia in your country tells you you really need your biometric print, information, retinal scan, whatever. You don't need to take it unless they tell you we need this. And if they tell you they need it, they are the ones that are going to use their biometric machine to take your biometric data while you are looking or applying for this visitor's visa to Australia. Okay, So it's different from Canada. Canada, it's mandatory that you take your bad data, that they take your bad data information at least once in 10 years. It's not the same for Australia. Okay? If you want to know about how to travel to Canada and the information, you need to submit the documentation. I think I made a video about this as well. I've made countless videos about this actually, one of which is going to pop up somewhere up there. Now, guys, before I continue, let me know down in the comment section below whether this video has been helpful to you. Are you planning to travel to Australia? Are you planning to travel to study in Australia, to work in Australia? It's going to help them. While you're doing it, let me know the country you're watching this video from because it's going to help me make more customized videos for you guys. Say if you're watching it from Chile, from India, you're watching from Dubai, whatever country, it's going to make me or help me make more customized videos for people in Chile or Dubai or wherever you're watching from. So just leave it down in the comment section. Let's continue. Remember, I told you in the beginning about healthcare examination. I told you if you can, do it and submit it while you're submitting your form, okay? Your application, your visa application form. But if by this point in which you already tendered your visa application form with all the supporting documents, you still haven't done your healthcare checks, the Embassy or High Commission of Australia in your country is going to tell you whether they require you to do this or not. If they tell you they need information or proof about your health status, this is the time. You need to understand that at this point, you already submitted all the documents for this visa processing to them already. They're going to reach out to you in a later date if they want you to run these checks or tests or not. So if they do, then you just go into your hospital in your city, the one you normally go to and run all the checks and send it to them as well. If you're traveling with kids, 
they definitely will want you to send healthcare checks, okay? They want to, they want to know that your kids are free of chicken pox, smallpox, measles, and all these other sicknesses or diseases that plague little kids, okay? So it's very vital that you understand how this works. Now, mistakes. What happens, Fuse? Oh, Fuse, I was, I filled the form and I made a mistake, okay? So I was filling the form for my whole family because we're looking to get visitors, visas, my kids, my wife, and I, and I, I mistakenly put my wife's name in my column and my name, and it's, it's just been stopping me, been bugging me. What am I gonna do? There is room for you to reach out to the embassy or high commission to tell them that listen guys some mistakes have been made in the application please can this is the right information to fill in xyz parameters it's very important that you know that you've made these mistakes on time and start to reach out to them as soon as possible okay they accept corrections okay because they're really, they're going to view you as someone who is honest someone who has high integrity because you're reaching out to them and say listen that information is not entirely correct i want you to change it to this one so reach out to them but reach out to them on time you're not going to apply or submit your documents today then reach out to them sometime in the end of june telling them you're an error it doesn't make any sense you submit it today maybe sometime this week you say listen i made a mistake can you correct this for me but there's grounds for you to withdraw your documents to make corrections or to send the right information to them to fill out in the right places in your application form it's possible that while you filled or after submitting your application form maybe you're indisposed maybe you work as a security detail for a minister or a high profile government official in your country so you're not always available to receive this information you can fill a form that gives correspondence authority to someone else remember what the form i mentioned earlier the form 956a form that form also has a section where you're going to fill information of the person who you were giving authority or you're authorizing to speak with anybody who's going to reach out to you from the Australian High Commission or the Embassy of Australia. It's very important that you don't keep them in the dark. They might want to get more information or more documentation to support something that you said in your application form. If they try reaching out to you and there's no response, you're going to be denied visa and that's just it. Okay, so if you cannot be in a position to communicate with these people, you can fill a correspondence form where you authorize someone else to be the one who's going to be talking on your behalf. You can reach out to the Embassy or High Commission of Australia if your status or things which you have changed. Maybe for some strange reason, you're no longer married to the woman you were married to before, or you're no longer married to the man you're married to before. Maybe when you filled the application for this visa, you were single and then you got married and then you got a baby and now you want to travel with your baby or something. There's something that has changed. Your phone number has changed, your email address has changed, your house address has changed. Whenever there's a change in something, living conditions, status, name, whatever, you have to reach out to the Embassy or High Commission with the new information. And if you're reaching out to the new information, it has to do with name change or, or the birth of a baby. You have to send them legal documents that backs this fact. Okay, it's going to make them understand that you're being transparent with them and you're not just going to happen in the airport with a baby. Oh, where are we going? Where are you going to, madam? Oh, I'm traveling to Australia. What's your baby? What's your baby's visa? <laughs> you don't have one. So you want to be as transparent as possible so that they know that there's a change in something that has to do with you and you communicated this change to them beforehand. When the visa outcome comes out, okay, when a decision has been made about your application, if you got granted a visa, you're going to get the visa grant number, you're going to get the information on when your visa kicks in, when your visa expires. This is even before you get to the embassy or high commission or third party processing organization that does the visa processing for the immigration services in Australia. You're going to get this information via mail that tells you, oh, this is your visa grant number. Oh, this is when your visa starts. Oh, these are the conditions in which you can leave on a visitor's visa while in Australia. Now, if you got denied visa as well, there is going to be the reason why your visa got denied. We denied your visa because we're not convinced that you actually can do this or you can do that. So you can actually review and reapply for the visa. There's grounds for you to review and reapply. 
okay? So guys, I hope, I certainly hope this video was helpful to people out there, particularly those who are looking to travel to Australia on tour or for tourism on a visitor's visa. I hope it was helpful to you. Or even those who just want to know, they're curious. They just want to know what it would take for them to travel to Australia on a business visa. And I forgot to mention one thing, okay? There's a visa application fee that's attached to processing a visitor's visa for Australia. Now, it goes without saying that you have to pay the application fee before your application can even be considered. And if you tender an application without paying the fee, your application is going to be rejected just by that alone. Okay, because that money gets remitted back to the, to the government of Australia and their country. So if this video was helpful to you, why don't you go down, do your boy a favor, okay? Smash the subscribe button while you're down there. Click the bell icon, which is the notification bell that keeps you notified when we drop new content. We always post two videos every week and they all have to do with travel tourism and lifestyle so when this video drop you're going to be notified and if this video was helpful to you in some way shape or form why don't you think about giving us a like it's free of charge it helps us a lot it tells mr youtube that you found this information helpful and valuable and they're going to find more people more people just like you all around the world to show these videos to and if you have friends family members acquaintances who are looking to get to australia on a visitor's visa why don't you think about sharing this video with them so they stay guided on the decisions to make and the right documents to submit with your application and maybe you're thinking, phew, I have tons and tons and tons of questions to ask you, but I'm not comfortable with leaving comments in the comment section down below. Wow, well, come on now. You can follow me on my socials. We're active on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay, so you can follow me on any of these platforms. And my TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram handles are all the same. It's up there at Views Chronicles. Okay? Now, don't forget, I always say this. Happiness is your property. You owe it to yourself to be happy. It's not the place of your family members or your friends to make you happy. It's your place to make yourself happy. So why don't you choose to be happy today? So if you're interested in knowing what it would require for you to change your visa status from a visitor's visa to a work visa while in Canada, a video is going to appear here. And if you want to know what it will require for you to travel to Canada, whether to work, study, live, get full or permanent residency, another video is going to appear here. So to change your visa status, to apply to go to Canada on any visa at all, you can click away and get that information. And until the next one, I still remain your boy, Fuse.